Hot diggity. You know what I love? The 80s. Let's all go back to the 80s for a little bit today and really enjoy ourselves. I was born right at the start of the 80s, so I had the benefit of being raised by trendy 20-something 80s parents. I had the radio-friendly, party-type parents that listened to Peter Gabriel and Huey Lewis in the News and Billy Joel. I mean, I was singing Corey Hart's I Wear My Sunglasses at Night by the time I could speak. I was singing along to Rick Astley before Never Gonna Give You Up was a punchline. I basically slept with Michael Jackson's bad cassette under my pillow. Now that I read that back, I realize that the previous sentence about Michael Jackson could easily turn into a dirty, not very nice joke. And I apologize. All in all, the 80s were an amazing decade where all common sense and good taste seemed to not matter. Hairstyles were insanely bad, makeup choices were gaudy and overdramatic, everyone was wearing spandex, and for some inexplicable reason, everyone decided that for those 10 years, everyone should wear neon clothes that could be seen from space. I remember being seven years old and going to school every day with a big neon pink windbreaker, and you know what? Everyone was cool with it. If it was a chemically aggressive color, you were a badass. It didn't matter what the color was. The problem I personally have with the 80s is that it's not really my time. I mean, I was a teenager in the 90s, so I relate much more to that decade. But my parents were young and outgoing, and I was at an age where I had to be around them all the time. So some of my fondest family memories come from watching my parents live through the 80s. I got to hear all the music and see all the movies and watch all the TV shows that define the era. In fact, it's 80s television that made me love the entertainment industry as much as I do. The Cosby Show, The Wonder Years, ALF, MacGyver, Cheers, even some of the lesser known and very Canadian classics like The Littlest Hobo, Beachcombers, Danger Bay, My Secret Identity. In fact, I blame my being a nerd directly on the fact that I loved Max Hedrum and Quantum Leap so much. So right now, I want everyone who remembers the 80s to close your eyes for a second and remember how awesome it was while you were there. Now come back to 2010 and remember how ridiculous we all looked and sounded. Let's all laugh fondly at how insane we all were for 10 years of our lives. So, why am I reminiscing about the 80s? Well, the hidden case I'm going to write about today was in fact hidden in 1980. While searching for information on it, I kept seeing pictures of ski people dressed up in their ridiculous neon ski outfits with fat boots and weird fur hats, and I got to thinking about how different the 80s were. It's an anomaly in our history and I think will remain unique. The 50s, 60s, and 70s all had a huge revival both in fashion and music from people who had not themselves lived through those decades. The 80s, however, was a period in time that only people who were alive at that point could actually think was cool. I don't think there will be a generation of kids in the future who will try to bring back the fashion and music of the 80s. I mean, I could be wrong, but for our sakes, I hope not. That decade, I believe, only needs to be done once. Go watch Hot Tub Time Machine and tell me I'm wrong. Okay, so on to the case that started this whole mess. The hidden case for this week's blog is the one hidden in Lake Placid. It was hidden near the site of the 1980 Winter Olympic Games. The ad is all about how the CC people took the case on the cross-country ski trails and then got lost in a blizzard. The ad isn't very detailed, so finding the case will be very difficult, if not impossible. But here are the facts I do know. You will need to ski the Olympic ski trails near, but not on, Whiteface Mountain. That's right. You're going to have to wait until there's snow, and then you're going to have to cross-country ski to get the case if you're lucky enough to find it. As I said, I don't have many details, but from what I can tell, you'll need to find a trail that has you climbing a steep incline which will bring you to a large, open mountaintop meadow. From there, you'll want to find a fence, probably of the sort cow farmers used to mark the pasture's limits, and then follow it. At some point, you should be facing the enormous face of Whiteface Mountain. From that point, look around and try to find a great place to hide something about the size of the TV you used to sit at home and watch Miami Vice on. That's where the case will be. And that's all the info I have, other than to tell you that the case is either three quarters of a mile from the 1980 cross country course finish line, or three quarters of a mile off the trail itself. 
Good luck. I highly doubt that the contestants on the adventure will have to do any cross-country skiing to find the case, but it should be very entertaining to watch no matter what. And if it helps, drink Canadian Club whenever you drink socially, but never ever drink and drive.